Hi, everybody. Welcome to Cox Connections. Brad Grunemeyer, Director of Public Government Affairs for Cox, Louisiana. Thank you so much for tuning in to our show. In this segment, we talk to our friends at the Art Council of New Orleans, the great work that they've been doing in the community for years, it seems. And uh, they have uh, some interesting things, the Percent for Art program and uh, some opportunities and uh, ways that you can learn and discover art in a very unique way and maybe in ways you never knew. And I'm happy to be joined by uh, the interim president and CEO, Ms. Mary Lynn Costa of the Arts Council of New Orleans, as well as Morgana King who is the director of public art. Thank you both for coming by today. And always good stuff, it seems, Mary Lynn, that you guys are doing at the Arts Council. And this one, uh, which I, I didn't know it actually had a name, but I, I'm, I'm always learning, which is good, uh, the Percent for Art program. Tell me a little bit about it. Well, it's a program that's been around for 25 years. Yep. It's actually an ordinance passed by the city where 1% of eligible capital improvement bonds are set aside for public art, mm -hmm. which can go out into our communities in many ways. They can be um, direct uh, site-specific pieces, uh, community outreach and education, uh, and also wall-hung pieces that are purchased directly from the artist to enhance and enrich the workplace for our um, city employees. So it's all over the city in libraries, Nord facilities, City Hall, sewage and water board public offices, places, public places. And you were just right. telling me some interesting numbers of what's actually out there. Over the 25 years we've had about 60 site specific pieces both interior and exterior as well as about 250 wall hung pieces that have been purchased. Now um, again one percent right? right. Mm -hmm. But I'm still, uh, I'm sure there's still a need, um, you know, for, you know, um, well, I, I guess I, not a need more so, but the need was to have that kind of dedicated funding to support that. Right, absolutely. And um, it is nice to have a dedicated funding stream right. because then we're able to predict what's going to happen and how we're going to be able to have opportunities for our local artists. Right. And so that's a, a way to encourage all of them to create. And also it's a way to respond to community needs and to have them know that they can have a voice through public art nice. and work with us and Parks and, and Parkways. It seems like a win-win It is. It's totally a win-win. We've had some great successes. Good. And, and Morgana, the, um, the recent current percent for art um, projects that are out there. Give us a few of them. Yeah, this is the 25th anniversary, so we're happy to be dedicating um, the most recent piece, which is uh, The Birth oh. of a Muse Let me see if I by can Kim Bernatus, if up, you can uh, show that. Can put that up it's at quick. the corner of uh, Terpsichore and Britannia Street, and it's the muse of, of dance and music. And we had a great celebration out there with tons of people dancing around the streets. And, and who was the actual artist on this? Kim Bernatus, and she's a, a teacher. She teaches sculpture classes at uh, the New Orleans Academy of Fine Arts. Excellent, excellent. That's awesome. And um, and uh, this is no light. <laughs> this, is no, <laughs> this is no light piece of artwork. Uh, it's it, it's you know. all bronze, and it was uh, created in clay first, yeah. and then she oh, made a, a mold of it, and we had it trucked in, and cranes, and the whole bit. And we were talking about this piece here, which is just the, the concept of it, which is the, um, the Spirit House, right? Right. Spirit and it's House. having a rededication, huh? Well, we recently had a rededication, relighting it since Katrina. Uh, it has been restored, uh, brought back to life, the lights back on, rewired, and uh, is now a real beacon in the Gentilly neighborhood. And you it were telling created, me an interesting story about that. Go ahead and tell me about that. It was actually done by John T. Scott and... Um, mm. Great Martin artist. Payton many, many years ago in combination with St. Leo the Great School students as well as Medard Nelson. The two end pieces yep. were done with drawings by the children. Um, Mr. Scott and uh, Mr. Payton met with the children, read them stories of art history stories, legends, um, African legends, African American legends and stories, and then asked them who were they, who were they, mm. who were they, where were they going in life, right, what did they yeah. want to be, and then those children did drawings, and those are translated on each end. That's that's amazing. And then uh, we were talking a little bit about other. Th well, we'll get to that in just a little bit. Okay. But uh, you actually have had the opportunity to receive some NEA grants as well, correct? Wonderful. Yes, we have. We've gotten um, one to actually document the 25 years, 25 for 25. So we're doing 25 interviews with artists, 
neighborhood organizations, uh, jurors, public uh, p officials who worked in the whole process over these 25 years, talking about the impact that it has had on them and on the community. And fantastic. And then the others, tell me a little bit about the Broad Street redevelopment. I know it's a signage project as yeah, well. Yeah, that's no? a little different. It's another NEA grant, um, but it's more of a private partnership. So our public art program, as well as doing the city-funded pieces, we also manage things with nonprofit groups and other uh, private agencies. So that's one to partner with Broad Community Connections. And, and, we're and, gonna, and these are neon signs, right? It's going to be neon yeah. signs all along Broad Street, making it oh look kind gosh. of much more automobile era 50s Because that's style. the feel of that, of Broad Street right. as well. So and you, we're kind you, of going back to the Broad Street heyday and, and hoping to bring some life back to those small businesses on Broad Street. That's fantastic. Of course, I'm, I got two little ones, so Cars is really big. It kind of reminded <laughs> yes. me of that movie for a second there. Not Radiator Springs, but you know what I'm saying. And I think that's great because, you know, we are kind of looking back the way to look to think about how we want our streets to look and 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 it's and it's kind of a beautiful thing that we're kind of kind of going 360 on this and kind of revisiting that the past is not, wasn't so bad and we don't have to change <laughs> and it's you know it's nice uh, it's a nice yeah. tip of the hat and and that there is money and out the you know efforts out there in the redevelopment side to, to make sure that signage is preserved and and utilized in, in a new different way and there's many many artists here in New Orleans who are using neon as their vehicle right. for expression who um, do the actual glass blowing and do wonderful creative pieces. One uh, piece that we have on the Tad Gormley Stadium by Michael Caine uh, is a exactly piece of neon yeah. that he did many years ago. And now tell me about Arts Week coming up or? Just passed. Just passed, I'm we sorry. We had Arts Week up. in September and it was a, a great opportunity to bring together yeah. all of our constituents. We had people from the development, architects, we had artists, we had um, the a gallery show celebrating the 25th anniversary so some of these models and maquettes that you see here were on display in a new gallery space that we have at the arts council and it's always in september correct correct yes. just about okay and this was really nice i want to i didn't want to pass up on this this is uh we can maybe just show you ron here this is really this neat is a, tell me a little about the um, libraries yeah a model uh there's four new libraries that we're working with uh, through the Percent for Art program, and they're going to be opening in the next few months. And this is the paintings. There's going to be 10 paintings in the New Orleans East branch by artist Jeff Whipple. And they're, they're used real community members. He went out to the temporary library site and photographed people reading books and have funny expressions, and some of them are shocked and amazed by what they're <laughs> reading, and he's pulled out great quotes to put together with the photos and made original paintings for the library. Well, uh, again, and, and the nice part, of you also make great collaborations real quick with the YLC, right. and have done other things such yes. as uh, For Kids and the for like. Kids and um, Fleur de Lis several years ago. And so. you guys, uh, I swear, um, it's always, it's just gratifying and great to know the great work that the Arts Council of New Orleans is doing and Thank need you. to be commended, so I really appreciate it. And it's, uh, if anybody's looking for information or where some of the uh, Percent for Art program and where they're located at, give us a website they can go to. Well, there's two places. If you're out walking on, around on the street and you have a mobile phone, you can go to Culture Now. Yep. Uh, it's a mobile app where you can find all of the Very cool. outdoor pieces listed. Yep. And then at home, you can go to percent.artscouncilofneworleans.org and that will give you the overview of all the projects and it has a database you can look through and find exactly the artist or the location that you're looking Wonderful. for and do a tour. Well, uh, Mary Lynn, as always, Thank great you. to have you here. Morgana, great job to you as well and congrats on, a, on, on the great percent uh, for art program in 25 years of that and great success and, and continued success. Great to have you Thank back you here. So okay. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Alrighty. All right, everybody, that wraps it up for this segment of Cox Connections. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.